It's time for Pure Performance. Get your stopwatches ready. It's time for Pure Performance with Andy Grabner and Brian Wilson. Hello and welcome to another episode of Pure Performance. My name is Brian Wilson and as always I have my co-host, the lovely, wonderful and talented Andy Grabner. Andy Grabner, how are you doing today? It's uh, very good, but I'm always surprised of the words you find for me to describe me. And I know you're lying and now I actually see you you're turning red every time you say lovely and intelligent and everything. Well, no, but it's I... usually like the, the, the nighttime talk show hosts, uh, you know, it's oh, yeah. always uh, whenever it's a man coming out, they say the talented whenever a yeah. woman comes out, they say the lovely, which is just kind of weird. Huh, so you're lovely and talented. Look at that. Andy. And tanned, because I just came back from vacation at the time of the recording. I was wondering about that. I thought it was yeah. funny lighting. You, you, you look kind of orange. You look like our. <laughs> you, you look like the former guy a little bit. Okay. No, I, I, just, for, for I, I just happened to be lucky enough to spend two weeks on vacation. One week in Croatia and ah. one week in the Austrian Alps. And we had 14 days of sunshine. Nice, nice, nice. I, uh, I didn't. I did not spend time in Croatia the last week, nor did I go to the Austrian Alps, but I had my but, little vacation before. But you did observe that I look a little funny today. I did, and I observed like your I also observed that your camera is a little lower, so you're looking down and it gives you a little bit of a maniacal look, a little more angular angled, and it's uh, it's kind of scaring me. I yeah. observe I observe that I'm kind of scared today. Yeah. And if I had to take a measurement of that scared level, well, I'd have to figure out what I'd want to use as an indicator for that. But yeah, huh. this is we all... also observed that my audio is better today because I'm actually holding my microphone in my hand and not doing strange things that you always blame me for, like making scratch noises. And because yeah, for, I don't, yeah. For anybody listening, please encourage Andy to 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 continue with this good audio trend by by tweeting at us saying, "I loved the I loved your audio, Andy." If we get at least one, then I think we can convince Andy to um, maybe duct tape the microphone to his hand or something for future yeah. episodes. Now, the question is, we've just discussed about what we've observed, what you've observed. The mm -hmm. question is, what else is observable? Is Are certain things observable? It's kind of an interesting, strange segue it to is. our topic today and our guest. Yes, it is. Would you like so to introduce who, our guest? I think I want to introduce him. And I think we will introduce a new funny accent today on the show. <laughs> funny meaning in a Mine's positive a funny way. Mine's the yeah, funny accent. Mine's the funny accent. I know, I know. But besides you and the you with the US accent, me with the Austrian accent, we have Henrik Rexit with his amazing Swedish French accent on the show. <laughs> Hi, Henrik. How are you? I have no idea what you're talking about, you Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We will, have, hey, we will have subtitles. We will get subtitles for today's episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need that, hey, for sure. Hendrik, it's great to have you on the show. And let's, let's actually dive into it. First of all, uh, when we talked about observability, this is really the topic of the show. It's actually the topic of your show. It's the topic of your new YouTube channel. Is it observable? Which is phenomenal that you do it because I think you're doing a lot of us a big favor by looking at a lot of technologies. Uh, but maybe before I continue for those people that have escaped your presence on the internet your presence in the performance engineering space can you quickly introduce yourself uh, so my name is uh, henrik rector that you mentioned and uh, and i've been working previously uh, in the performance engineering landscape more than 14 15 15, 15 plus years gosh yeah. that means that when, oh gosh I, it, uh, We're all really getting old. Oh gosh, I know yeah. I don't talk about my age, but never mind. Uh, and uh, and I recently had the chance to, uh, yeah, to be uh, be invited to join uh, uh, Linz because I heard that Linz is doing a lot of amazing stuff, uh, beer uh, and and barbecue. Uh, so uh, the reason why I said, hey, I have to to join an, uh, just amazing company based in Linz just to enjoy barbecue and beer that that makes a lot of sense for me there's no other place you can get barbecue and beer it's illegal in the world unless you're in Linz. exactly yeah it sounds like it no and henrik i mean for those people that they don't know yet uh thanks for thanks for you to make the move i know it's always hard to move after that many years 
uh, with an employer. You used to work for uh, Neotis, who are now Tricentis and now joined uh, Dynatrace. Very happy to have you on board, but very, really happy that you are pushing a topic and educating the community around observability. And uh, your YouTube channel is called Is It Observable? And I would really love to uh, get you, give you the chance to talk a little bit about you know, why did you start the channel? Um, what are actually things to consider when we talk about observability? What is, you know, what should be observed, what shouldn't be observed? And also what are the technologies you have already covered? What technologies are coming up? Uh, what will people learn if they watch your show? So, yeah, I, I started this, uh, this new uh, YouTube channel uh, because, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I think there's a, a clear need for education. I think um, now if you look around us, uh, we have so many new technology coming out, coming in, in the market, uh, especially uh, when it comes to cloud native technologies. I mean, and we, the last few years, of everyone was doing it, do it by yourself. But if you look around, you, if you search quickly on internet, then you can have some just blogs describing something, but you don't have clearly uh, tutorials or, or education, I mean, content that will help you to get onboarded or get started uh, to how to collect things. I mean, observability is, is a pretty large topic because mm -hmm. uh, you have several things to consider uh, when you want to properly observe an, env uh, an environment. So, uh, yeah, of course, we think about metrics. It makes sense. Uh, we have the logs. The logs could be also considered like a metric as well. And uh, we have the traces and uh, we have the events. There, there's so many things we can do and, and then correlate to... Uh, to be more efficient and uh, more uh, when it comes to troubleshoot or or, or delivering uh, reliable systems to our customers. So I think observability is a pretty hard topic. And uh, and I think for all of you listening today, um, I'm pretty sure that you could get frustrated, especially have a new technology and say, hey, uh, could you ingest those traces in this application? And then suddenly you search on the internet and you figure out that you're a bit alone there. So don't worry. I don't want you to be alone anymore. I want to help you. Uh, <laughs> I've been be also in the dark <laughs> too many years. Uh, I've been I've been sleeping outside, and this is why I have a long beard because I, I've been I just get, come out from the forests since, <laughs> since several several months, and and now I learn to to uh, to survive in in this uh, wild uh, cloud native forests. And and I can give you some 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 tips, but in fact I had to learn because uh, for me uh, from a performance engineering side I was I was uh, looking at uh, problems from a different angle, mm -hmm. and now uh, I, I look uh, observability from another angle. So I think for me it was also a good excuse uh, to get onboarded, to get trained, and share the things that I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking at and I'm, I'm I'm learning. So I think that's that's the develop the, ob the objective. Of is it observable? Mm -hmm. For sure. I, I think you're actually uh, pretty lucky, right? Uh, that you can really do stuff that we would all love to do, but we can't because we don't have the time. But thanks to you, you save us time. You save us that need to understand certain technologies like Prometheus, like, you know, I'm just looking at your YouTube channel here on the right. You talk about how to collect metrics in Kubernetes. I think this is where you do an amazing job in explaining uh, how metrics in general work in Kubernetes. You, you, you give an overview of how Prometheus works. For me, when I watched the first episode, I, I think I texted you, I think on WhatsApp, and said, hey, this is, I learned so many things, even though I thought I already know stuff. Then the last episodes, you talk about uh, log collections. You have Loki, uh, Promptail. The latest one is Fluent Bit. Probably by the time this episode airs, there's even more episodes coming up, but it's, it's really great that you take the time and it takes time to dive into these technologies and into figuring out how to observe it, but what's important to observe and what to do with the data. And then you condense it into like, what is it, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, pieces of YouTube tutorials. Yeah, it really depends on the, of the content and uh, because depending on the content, you, have, you can have a lot of things to cover. Mm -hmm. So I, I was targeting initially a 20 minutes uh, episode, but uh, at the end of the day, it's more likely between 20 and, and 35 minutes mm -hmm. uh, because I always add um, in, in, the, in the episode, I always have a structure for, for each episode where I start to first explain 
uh, the technology, the architecture. So even if you know the technology, you can skip it and go to the next section. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I go to how to configure it. Uh, and last, which I think is the most valuable stuff for the content is the tutorial. So I am always creating a new uh, GitHub repository with uh, some readme files. So then if you want to do uh, and play around it from uh, at your own pace, at, at uh, your home, uh, you have all normally all the materials to, uh, to do it by yourself. Yeah. And I want to point out to the listeners that Henrik has some lighting gear behind us, so it's not a poorly lit, crummy looking video. It's uh, semi-professionally done. So uh, it's, it's not going to be, you know, sometimes you see videos out there and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't watch this. Uh, but Henrik's, Henrik's putting, in the, putting in the elbow grease and, and, and making it look as good as he can, even with his beard. Uh, he makes up for it with the lighting. Are you talking about my performance <laughs> clinics that are typically not well lit because I'm just doing it? No, 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 no. no, no, ser no seriously, I'm not talking about those. Just, you know, there's, there's different. I, I, I think YouTube is fascinating these days, you know. Yeah. Um, for every... For every 203 things that the internet's destroying our world for, there is one good thing for those 200 negatives and the ability to learn things on YouTube, whether it's observability, whether it's a lot of the audio stuff in my case, whether it's like, hey, I need to change the oxygen sensor in my car. Like there's, people put so many great videos out there and then what mm -hmm. you notice is you watch more of them is that mm -hmm. some are really well made mm -hmm. and some are not so well made, but they can all teach you. But I'm, I'm just giving yeah. kudos to Henry, Henrik because I can even see behind them and you'll see in the picture the, the, the lighting gear and, and that's always, that just always makes it a lot more enjoyable to have, have good production. Yeah. So. Hey, and, and I was, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So since, since I started this, uh, this YouTube channels, uh, you know, uh, my, my wife used, has, used to have trouble to explain what I'm doing. And then now with all those equipment now, it's, it's even more, it's worse. And, and, you know, my kids is like, Hey, my father is, playing with audio and video equipment so it sounds quite weird you know just tell it's your kids a, you're a youtube star what do they call it a, yeah you know. an influencer yeah a youtube influencer yeah yeah <laughs> yeah for me it's pretty negative to be an influencer i mean if you look at the influencers that we have around us uh, i mean especially in Instagram. But, uh, yeah well i also want to give a quick shout out because uh, brian you said right there's a couple that are doing a pretty good job and we already had uh, Nana from Tech World by yeah, Nana. Uh, she, she's doing a great one. So shout out to her. Also, I started watching more and more content from Viktor Farcic, um, who has been putting out a lot of great content on continuous delivery technology, also on cloud native. And uh, also, I think a shout out to him because he he uh, he also looked at some of your stuff, Henry, and gave you you know some feedback. I think that's just phenomenal that all of these. Uh, YouTube stars, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> you went now. Uh, that it's not just like a I'm doing my stuff and I don't share anything, but he gave some great feedback as well uh, on how to and what he learned over the years. That's really good. And and also just to remind to the attendees to, to today that are listening, uh, I mean, if you want to make our uh, videos better uh, and more accurate to your projects and your own personal. Uh, technical constraint that you can face uh, within your organization. Uh, yeah. Send me a, a, a chat uh, through YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, I'm interested to get uh, uh, to, to collect the technology that you would like me to cover. Because uh, at the moment I'm, I'm driving those, uh, the backlog based on tech well-known technology of the market. But again, if you think that there are more technology that make more sense, uh, let, please let me know. And I will try to do my best to cover those new episodes as well. I, I've got an idea for an episode, Henrik. Can you observe Schrodinger's cat? Observe what? Are you familiar with Schrodinger's cat? Uh, no. The chaos theory. Is it chaos theory? Yeah, Schrodinger. The idea that you put, um, in quantum physics, you put a cat in a box with a radioactive isotope. And in order to tell if the cat is alive or dead, you'd have to open the box and look. But mathematically, <laughs> mathematically, it could be alive, both alive and dead at the same time. And the only way to know is to open it, which then changes the outcome. So the question really is then, is that observable? But because by observing it, you change the outcome. So I think you need to spend an entire, I'll send you, I'll send you, 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 you can read it up because I'm sure you can, yeah. I'm sure you can do a full episode on that because no, I'm kidding. But 
but a bad you know, attempt I mean, at a joke and you never heard of the concept. So it, it kind of backfired. So I will shut up now and, and we'll move on. Let's get into the meat of the topic. <laughs> no, no. So, so I, I did, uh, from the show perspective, I, I, I for, I'm now at the moment and I just launched the, the channel. So I'm pretty much focused on building relevant content for everyone. Uh, but then I, I wanted to also cover weird topics, more funny topics. Uh, but I think I will wait a bit to get you know, followers <laughs> to start doing crazy stuff uh, because otherwise people will try to, you won't understand the, the, the purpose of the channel if I start doing stuff, <laughs> some weird stuff. Hey, uh, Henrik, you earlier you mentioned, I think this is something that we need to repeat as well. You have a GitHub repository or a GitHub work. It's called Is It Observable? And uh, I already see that you have, uh, you know, six episodes on there. Uh, the next ones are PromQL, Kubernetes events. So it's really great that you are, you know, as you said earlier, not only covering the technology in a YouTube fashion where you explain the technology and then walk through what you've learned and what's important and how is it observable, but then you also provide uh, the tutorials to really that everybody can uh, kind of explain and, and explore it. So thank you so much for that. That's really great. Uh, one question that I have for you now, for people especially that are here for this the first time, what... What is the thing that you like coming to the first episode or maybe the late, whatever episode you, you want to pick, what is the, the, the thing that you, that you thought, ah, oh, this is so great that I learned. And I would love that people watch this episode because I think this was an, an, an eye opener for me. I think, I mean, for every episode, I, I learn something, uh, to be honest, because uh, when you have to build a tutorial and find the right approach, uh, sometimes you are doing something in one uh, well-known approach and then some, some, and suddenly you discover that you can do it some in another way. Uh, so especially in, in, um, in Prometheus, uh, all the, the notion of those uh, service monitor and uh, that will help you basically to configure uh, properly uh, Prometheus. So I think that was very interesting. But otherwise for the other parts, uh, I mean, logging, I was not a, an expert in the, uh, the logging space, to be honest. So I, I had to jump in that, uh, in that space. And I learned quite a, a lot. Um, all those, uh, the pipeline that you have to design to, uh, yeah, to, to ingest and transform your log streams before you store it. Um, that was really interesting to be honest, because, uh, I see a lot of value for a lot of organizations. Uh, I mean, we all want to get logs and we want all wants to attach some context and, and, uh, and, and sometimes you just read a blog and you understand the concept, but if you don't play around it, then mm -hmm. it could be very virtual as a concept. In fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and last, I think the, the episode that will come up soon because it's not published yet. Uh, it's about, uh, uh, ingress and, uh, Istio, uh, where I, I knew a few things around it, uh, but I really wanted to dig in Istio because I was really looking for the uh, observability capacity that it offers as well. And I was really, really uh, impressed, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I never thought about uh, all the things that you can do with Istio. So that was a, a really, uh, for me, a, a pleasure. And I had fun building that episode. Uh, and I hope that you will also uh, have fun uh, consuming that episode for those who's listening. Mm -hmm. Are you just covering Istio or are you covering service meshes in general? Or is there another episode coming up with other service mesh technologies? So I, I, in, because it was the first time, uh, I, I first ex, ex introduced the concept of service mesh. And then I jump in, in, in Istio because otherwise it's going to be very uh, uh, brutal for users to say, hey, here it is, Joe. And then you introduce all those concepts related to service mesh. So I had to first uh, introduce our smash before jumping into Istio, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, for the other um, service mesh, uh, like Linkerd and the others, uh, I can basically uh, continue doing another episode. But uh, I say, uh, for the moment, I thought, I'd, hey, I want to do observability and start with Kubernetes. And Kubernetes, there is so many different angles and different solutions. So I thought that I want to do this series first, and then maybe we can improve it by adding more and more solutions. Uh, the next... What I would like to uh, to also address is uh, everything related to uh, site reliability engineering. So uh, uh, the uh, SLI, the SLO, uh, how how to get started because because this is what we I mean if I if I have want to start and use SLI and SLO, 
uh, I want to be have someone saying, "Hey, you want to get started? This is how you should do it. This is the this is would be the process." Uh, so this is what I'm, I'm trying to to build. Uh, and and same thing. There's so many things like chaos engineering, uh, and there's so many product out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I usually take advantage of the of each each individual episodes to yeah, pick a solution and deep dive on on the solution or two maybe uh, depending on the episodes. And, and this is really interesting. So sometimes you can see that the solution makes sense. Uh, some mm-hmm. others are more experimental, uh, but at least at least it, it's a way of seeing it lively. Just it's better. I mean, I'm, I like I like to read blogs, but sometimes when you look at the blog, you say, okay, it's cool. The picture, I love it. The screenshots of the the overall solution, I love it. But how do you get to that point? And this is usually the question you can ask yourself when you read a, an awesome blog on a, on a new solution for sure. Mm-hmm. Hey, I wanted to ask you about the uh, SLO one. It's funny because it, like, just before the recording of this podcast, I was on a call with a prospect and they were interested in the SLO topic. And I, I doubt your video come out in time, but they said to me specifically, do you also have any guidance for best practices? Because they were new to the SLO thing. They've heard about them. They've looked into them. But to your point with why this is such a great topic or all these topics are great is because, yes, we can understand what an SLO is and tell you, you know, what to calculate or if you need to. But where do you start, right? If you're just getting into this idea, um, you know, what are best practices for starting out with SLOs? And I think I'm assuming or I guess I should ask. Would would do your episodes cover things like best practices for getting started? You know, start with these, and I think you mentioned it already early on. Like, here are the things that you should care about. So, in 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 the concept of something like an SLO episode, these are the kind of things that would help a a, a person know what to start with setting up. Correct? Yeah, correct. Because uh, I I think that uh, there are lots of content today uh, explaining what is an SLI and explaining what is an SLO. So I think providing another video explaining <laughs> what it is, I mean, it doesn't make bring value. So I thought, I think I thought that bringing the, covering the angle on how to get started and, and what would be the recommended process to do so, I think makes more sense for, for our community. And, and, um, what I am trying to, to do in the next coming episodes, um, I mean, as if possible, of course, is to get have guests to the show. Uh, so uh, for the um, SLO SLI uh, uh, episodes, uh, I will be uh, I will have uh, special guests that uh, knows very well uh, the SLI and SLO. Uh, and uh, he, I think Andy and Brian, you have interviewed. It's uh, Steve McGee from Steve from McGee. Google. Mm-hmm. So he will he would be part of uh, of this episode. Yeah, it's great. We had him on a podcast a couple of weeks or months ago. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an important point you make too. That oftentimes there are things out there that explain um, what something is, but nothing to tell you what how to get started or what to pick. If you even take a if you think about um, not even from an SLO point of view, but monitoring your end user. And this is something that's been a topic, a hot topic in web performance forever is what metric do we use? Do we use page load time? Do we use, you know, visually complete kind of thing or time to first paint and having a discussion around how can an organization decide what to pick there? Because, you you know, web performance, it all depends on what you're doing, what's important to the, these are the things that are not out there. There's things that there are videos, there are explanations about what these metrics are, what they tell you, but how to, how to have that conversation or how to have the thought process around what's going to be best for our organization and most meaningful for us is something that's often forgotten. And we, we see it all the time where people ask, uh, you know, well, what, what should I do? I'm like, well, I don't know. I'd have to have a room full of people to talk about what's important to the organization and these considerations. So I think that's a really great angle that you're adding to it um, because it's it's people are left, everyone's just left assuming they know what to do with the information, which most people don't, I think, because it's, it's this brave new world of information overload and, and what do we pick and how do we start? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's usually the biggest challenge because uh, the, and in fact, it's interesting because we, we had a few meetings with the customers on that particular topic of SLI and SLO. And, and everyone says, hey, could you give me a standard SLI? Can you give me a standard 
SLO. And I think uh, there is a misunderstanding. Uh, there is no standard SLO. Uh, I think you have to, to know your system, know your users, know your environment, and, and you will define your SLO. So I think, yeah, it makes a point. So I think people understand the concepts and definitions, but mm -hmm. when it comes to say, okay, now, now I'm going to start. And yeah, it could be very difficult. I mean, even in video games, the, the first level is like you, you learn how to just uh, use the remote control. So, uh, yeah, think about is it observable like the, the first uh, uh, stage of your best video games where you, I'm going to teach you how to control your character and behave in this cloud native world. Hey, Henrik, as you are covering more and more technologies, it means you are pulling in more and more data, whether it's logs, metrics, traces, events. Have you also, when you when you walk through these technologies, do you also cover like what happens with this data? Like where does the data end up? What do you do with the data? Because just observing data is great, right? That's the first piece of getting the data in and observing it. But what do we do with the data? Uh, where does it get stored? Do you cover this as well? So uh, I explained the way, I mean, the, the way the storage has been done, if you take the logging, for example. Um, and then, yeah, having ingested some metrics or some logs or some traces is great, but then understanding what you can achieve with this, it's another piece. Uh, for the moment, I, I try to build graphs and explain, I mean, for the, the things you should pay attention in communities, for example, but for the others to be a complete or transparent is... Uh, depending on the topic, which it could be very big, uh, you don't have the ability to cover uh, things you should uh, consider. Uh, those metrics are really important. In the case of Istio, for example, you should do this and this and this, and that will be the best dashboard that you can do and, and to uh, to be able to uh, to utilize the, the, the data that you have ingested. But that makes sense. Uh, I could definitely... Uh, do a series for each new episode where you say, now that we have ingested the things, this would be uh, how you should consume it in a smart way. Yeah, And also, as you said, right, even though I think it's probably very hard to say what is a good threshold, what is a good, um, I don't know, behavior, because it always depends on the application, but certain things are probably... Like, for instance, right, if you are coming back to problem patterns that we've seen over the years, making too many round trips to the database, and if you can measure this, and this is something you can say, this is not a good thing. Or if you're running constantly in garbage collection issues and you can measure it and observe it through certain, let's say, metrics, then, so I assume for Istio, there is, are some metrics that are, let's say, indicators of bad behavior or good behavior. So I think that would be great if you can at some point cover this as well. Yeah, at that moment, I was very focused on uh, on how to connect things together and mm -hmm. how how to, what would be the, the areas where you should uh, bring your attention uh, because there are problems related to those components and those components need to be properly observed. Mm -hmm. um, and then the... Uh, then there are a few open source solutions out there, which is are, are amazing. So I, for me, it also was a great excuse to say, hey, can I connect this solution with Tenetrace? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, so then I, I, I start this, uh, this, uh, this episode to say, let's figure out if it's possible or not. So for me, it's, a, it's a, an excellent learning curve, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and I think also I try to br bring the angle of uh, of uh, yeah, making making uh, things connected together and and take the best out of all those solutions. Then to have all the metrics in one place, so you can have a real observability of everything. You know, th this reminds me of the old question: If a tree falls in the woods, does anybody hear it? Right? If a process falls over, does anybody know? Or you know, does anybody feel it? Uh, you, you you can collect the data, but are you? doing something with it is it bubbling up are you aware of it uh, which is the second half of it you know observability goes hand in hand with as andy said you know what, how is it being stored how is it being processed is it dashboards is it being analyzed through some you know automated process or not whatever that is but that's uh i, I hadn't thought about the the concept of the tree in the woods thing but it's a it's a fun debate um 
Uh, hey, Henrik, now I'm, I'm not exactly sure when this airs, but I know you are pushing out new episodes every other week. I think Thursday is is an observable day, correct? What I so it's not, uh, yeah, I, I, I try to find a way of attracting people to the channel. So that, that was my communication of oh, last Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> so it's every uh, two uh, every fif- uh, two weeks I deliver a new episode. So every 15 days and the delivery date will be Thursday. Okay. So every other Thursday is is it observable day? Observability yeah, exactly. Thursdays. Observability yes. Thursdays. Yeah. Mm. Right. That's nice. And uh, what's you know looking beyond now at the time of the recording, it's August. I assume this will air sometime, maybe in September. Um, what other technologies besides the ones you've already mentioned do you have in mind? What's what's coming up? Uh, so there is lots, lots of, of technology that will come up uh, uh, in the next coming weeks. So uh, I think um, because I covered Prometheus and 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 we know all we know that if you want to consume, it, it's great to collect things that you mentioned, but if you want to consume the data to create alerts or with uh, with the alert manager of, of Prometheus or, or or Grafana to make dashboards, you need to understand a bit PromQL. So uh, that's why I, d- I decided to do a, an episode dedicated to PromQL. Um, and uh, so this one will be uh, in, in uh, end of the month. Uh, and then I have uh, now uh, currently uh, a new episode coming in with uh, the Kubernetes events. Uh, there is so much great information that you can gather from uh, only the events on uh, because your every Kubernetes object is going through various states and there's a lot of events coming in and coming out. And I think it's uh, for me. It was really interesting to to learn. So it's I would say it's it's a bit the the second angle of the first episode on Kubernetes. So I I remind few concepts related to uh, to Kubernetes in the, that uh, Kubernetes events. Um, otherwise, uh, op- open telemetry is a is a very very hot topic. So uh, I indirectly covered it with the events because uh, in the events I. I, I built a, a very interesting tutorials to connect the case span from WeaveWorks that uh, transform the event flow into uh, traces. So I connected case span with uh, with Dana Trace. So that was a, a way of introducing the open telemetry collector. But uh, I'm planning to have a, a series of of uh, episodes on open telemetry. So uh, first, uh, what it is, uh, then going more on. On the, on the practitioner aspects of how to instrument, what are the things you should instrument or not on your code. And, and, and of course, the, the other angle is how once you have ingested those traces, uh, how you should uh, consume those traces. And, and again, I have uh, tons of um, other technology, more or less related to the cloud. So uh, uh, Google Cloud Functions, uh, Google Cloud Run, uh, uh, all the, the various technology uh, concepts that are uh, available in AWS as well. Uh, so there is a, a pretty large uh, backlog at, as of as of now. But uh, yeah, normally in September you you will have the events and the uh, SRE first episode of an SREs and, and open telemetry available for for the community. Hey, just because it's fresh on my mind, open telemetry. You should talk with uh, Bean Facker. He's one of our colleagues because. Obviously, we've just talked about technology typical in the cloud native space and why all of this came out in cloud native. Baron is currently working on instrumenting Jenkins pipelines with open telemetry. Uh, they are contributing back to some open plugins that are um, basically creating spans and traces every time you're executing a Jenkins pipeline. So you, they actually see now through uh, open telemetry where pipelines spend their time. Right? Is it waiting for an agent? Is it checking out source code? Is it building which task? And uh, so just as a reminder for me today, where we talk about open telemetry, we talked about cloud native technology, but some of these things you're covering is not just purely focused on Kubernetes, right? No, 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 no. Clearly not. Clearly not. No, no. Uh, for example, I, I will have an episode with uh, some... some uh, uh, pe- uh, some uh, DevRel from Google on four keys. And in, in fact, what you just mentioned gets directly in the Google four keys uh, topic where you not only monitor your applications, uh, but you also monitor the tools that you have around you. Mm-hmm. So Jenkins is definitely a, a way of uh, 
uh, you can collect some some metrics and some some traces to figure out how efficient you are in your releases, uh, your pipelines, and so on. So I think there is a lot of great uh, information and things that we can collect to improve our process, internal process. It's incredible that people are now going to be monitoring uh, Jenkins and, and the pipeline tools. Because Andy, like way back when we started talking about so much more of the automated pipelines, the concept came in as your pipeline is your new code, right? right? Because it's getting more and more complex. There's more and more lines of code to write, in, to, to write all this. And, and now people are getting to the point where it's gotten so big, we need to monitor it to find some yeah. efficiencies. But not only efficiencies probably in the programming of the code and the way it's being used, but also, I guess, timing certain areas, you can take a look at um, how long certain processes are taking to find ways to improve them organizationally. Not saying yeah. like, oh, not not in the point that Jenkins slows down, but what's the um, what's the term about the uh, how long each little phase takes? There's that, uh, I can't, I'm blanking on terminology. When we look at, um, when you look at a Pardon? pipeline. Uh, Individual the the stream management solutions? No, nah, no, that's right. That, Whatever. I can't think of the term. But it's it's interesting because you can now look at your pipeline and see what, what sections are taking long and then focus on, hey, how do we improve what do we how do we find efficiencies for this team so that we can speed that part up and you're right, yeah. because maybe Jenkins is taking long on it because of something that they're doing. Yeah, it's, or I think what burned uh, what he showed me today, just finding out when builds are kicked off and which environments these builds run on and where there's a lack of resources. So as you know, right, we internally when we build our agents, we build them on all sorts of different technologies, um, mm -hmm. including Solaris, I mean, all different environments. And if they're all kicked off at the same time, they all wait for the same resources and we only have a certain pool of resources. So that means this information now allows them to better schedule their mm -hmm. pipelines because they can then schedule them so that individual pipelines don't have to wait too long. Or, you know, at certain, let's say, times during the day, maybe developers um, are tending to do more pull requests. And maybe at this particular point in time, we need to scale up the uh, the Jenkins agents to just have more resources available. So it's interesting, exactly. It's very interesting what we can do with this technology that kind of emerged out of cloud native, but now also benefits the non-cloud native, the more traditional world we used to live in. So when we start observing the observability tools, what do we call that? <laughs> The Watchman. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good but one. You, yeah. you see, they, they, they had a quite, uh, had a, a customer the other day saying, "Hey, do you expose your metrics in a Prometheus format? Do you expose the way you're collecting the metrics in a Prometheus format?" I say, oh, "That's interesting." Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, basically they're asking, "Can I monitor Dynatrace? So, uh, or can I observe Dynatrace?" Yeah. But well, we do, you know, self-monitoring. So we definitely have a lot of metrics that we give to our customers. And uh, we also use this internally. Right? And uh, yeah, so I think next time, well, hopefully you answer this, you can, yes, we, we, got, we got the metrics. We have a lot of self-monitoring. The question is what, they, what they're interested in. Um, Henrik, so the Is It Observable, the YouTube channel, uh, we definitely put links to the uh, summary of the podcast. There's the GitHub uh, Is It Observable organization with a couple of repositories for each episode. Is there anything else? Do you have a Twitter account already? Do you have a, a I don't know, I think a domain? I heard something about that you're trying to get a domain. What's What else is What? How can people follow you? Uh, so at the moment, uh, I didn't create a dedicated t Twitter account for Is It Observable. So uh, you could basically reach out to me uh, uh, on uh, at h rexed that's why my twitter uh, account or you can reach out to me also on linkedin uh, where you also have my profile so if you find my find a, a weird guy with a lego face don't don't worry that's that's myself so don't 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 be shy you can it's not a fake account it's a real person behind behind this plastic there is a real heart beat, beating inside you know uh, but otherwise, I, I'm planning to uh, to open a website, so it will be easier for those who uh, follow me to uh, to uh, search for and filter for for various episodes. And uh, and I also I'm planning to probably do a, a forum uh, where you could uh, suggest your topics. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, we 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 started with the first promotion about. Uh, 
Mission Impossible. Mm. So maybe uh, the next future episode, uh, the followers could uh, post and record their voices so I can use it too for the intro. That will be fun. But I will figure out if technically if everything is possible uh, once I start to build the website. So I think Very people nice. can also reach you if on the th in the third full moon of the year, if they go to a clearing in the woods and shout your name, the gnome people will come and take you to Henrik's Lego world where you can interact and discuss these things in a special Lego land. Um, or you just have to, to bring a fresh new Belgium beer in the wood and you simply by opening it, uh, I will <laughs> hear it from long distance and I will, uh, I will join you uh, directly. I right. just got nothing for that. <laughs> no, I got nothing to add. I just know now that I need to uh, yeah, get some Belgian beer in September because I know Henrik is going to visit the place, the only place in the world where they have beer and barbecue, as he said in the beginning, Linz, mm -hmm. Austria. Um, so I need to get some Belgian beer. No, I got nothing else to say. I just want to say uh, thanks again, Henrik, for doing this. You do us all a big favor um, because... Not every one of us has the time to look into these technologies and you're making it very easily consumable. I got already some great feedback from people um, that I've kind of, you know, sent the link to and they said, yeah, this is great. You have, um, you, you have a nice set of humor, the way you do your videos and it's just educational. And yeah, that's all I can say. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you will thank you with that. Yeah. You will thank you. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, any 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 closing uh, thoughts, Henrik? Um, uh, what can I say? Um, it would be. A, a, do you think we would be able to uh, observe the quality of the videos that is produced? So, how can I observe myself? doing a good job. So that will be a question for all of you. Um, so let's bring observability in, uh, is it observable? See, the, the, the DevOps practices, which is really from the Toyota factory practices, those can be applied everywhere. Observability can be applied everywhere. It doesn't have to just be metrics, mm -hmm. you know. Are, is, are you, was that a dog or a cat behind you that was walking through? That was so the daughter. <laughs> that was the daughter. <laughs> It's, oh. I, I know that we are. We all have a lot of hair at home, but it was. It I just was my saw. Dad. I just saw. I just saw a black shape. So you can ask her: Are you being a good dad? Right. That's observability there, and it depends on if you're giving her candy. This. Yeah, I'm, I'm too afraid to ask those kind of questions to my kids. You know, I don't know if the, the you source, know, you the source you... data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, like, yes, I know. observability can be applied everywhere. Um, Thank you, Henrik, for being on and uh, look really forward to seeing where you take your show. Uh, if anybody has ideas for Henrik, we'll have links uh, in the places to put it on. If you think you might make a good guess for him, reach out to him. If you just want to share a Belgian beer with him, you know, you can do that as well. Same with us. If you have any ideas uh, or want to be a guest on the show, reach out to us, pure underscore DT on Twitter, or you can send us an email at pureperformance at dynatrace.com. And... Uh, Thank you, Henrik. Thank you, Andy, for always making this possible. And uh, I guess thank you, our listeners. We love you. And thank stay you. safe, everybody. We're not out of this yet. So yeah. thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.